word that I am very passionate about and has defined a lot of my life is beshert. In Yiddish, it's meant to be. It's been my philosophy of life. It's why I never look backwards. Inspiring lives that are healthier for everyone. People say, what do you regret? And I say, I don't. Grossman is like superwoman and mom, both all in one. She's a bad sister. She is a bad sister, let me tell you. What does leading the healthiest, best life you can mean to you? She's an idol of mine. Smart, focused, determined. Someone that is inspiring, especially to me. She just is somebody that looks at the target and says, I'm going to hit it. Our goal is to start to change the health trajectory of the world. I really believe she's a game changer. Thank you so much, Mindy, for spending Thank the you. afternoon with us. <laughs> that was good. So the first few years of my life, we were in Rego Park, Queens, but then we moved to Long Island when I was four. And I remember from the very, very beginning, always knowing that I was adopted, but that it was defined as how special I was. A husband and wife wanted her that badly that they found her and they adopted her. I took that, even as a young person, very seriously and said, if I've been given this gift, I better do something with it. And I think that really, in many ways, is the core of who she is and why she is. Starting at the age of five, I was obsessed with being a lawyer and then a judge. I was very driven to accomplish that until the last semester of my senior year of college. I was in Washington, D.C. at George Washington. I woke up and said, I can't do this. The real courage in life is the courage that it takes to stand up for what you know is right for you. I have to change the course of my life. And if I don't, and I continue down this path, it's gonna be very hard to take it back later. That one step was probably a, as difficult a challenge as anyone can imagine. And with that, I called my parents and I said, I don't want to go to law school in the fall. I'm moving to New York City and I'm going to figure it out. My parents probably would have had, I would have had to call 911 to come pick them up off the floor. But they were like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that it's a different path I don't think that she wasn't terrified. I think she was terrified, but she did it. In 1977, the city was a little sketchy. And it was going into what we refer to as new wave. Different music groups, different kind of haircuts, different kind of style. I had an interview with the president of the international division of a menswear portfolio company called Manhattan Industries. The last question at the interview was, well, do you take shorthand? And in my head, I knew that if I said no, I might not get the job. So I quickly said, no, but I take fast longhand and I got the job. I think it was really difficult because it was a men's business run by men, controlled by men, and Mindy Grossman came in as sort of uh, a powerhouse. So there I was in sales in menswear, having no idea what I was doing. Most people were finding their lane, settling and, and accepting what they had in front of them. I think Mindy was too hungry. So she took those chances and moved around and it ultimately worked out very well for her. What I really became adept at was really listening and understanding people's needs. I met her at a menswear event in, I believe, Las Vegas. And I asked her to come join me. I thought uh, with her energy, her expertise, her knowledge of the industry, she would be a great asset. At that point, I had really evolved from just being on the sales side of things to work closely with a designer on how do you take the elements of design and make it as commercially viable as possible, even if you were trying to be a little disruptive. She was bringing so much style, but yet, for lack of a better word, 
amazing brain to those meetings. She was never withholding her opinion. And I like that because I didn't want to be yesed. I wanted someone to be very honest and, and transparent with me. She's not the person you want to go up against. But if she's on your side, she is your best advocate. She is so energetic and she is so, I would say, professionally driven. And I remember having to tell them that I'd found out I was pregnant not soon after I started working there and I was so nervous. But I said, don't worry, you know, I'll, 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 I'll get everything done. I couldn't see her pregnancy taking away from the business and it, it didn't. She worked right up until the day before she had the baby. I went from the showroom, from a meeting with Nordstrom, to the hospital to have the baby, and then I was back in four weeks. Insanity. When she was about 18 months old, I started literally getting harassed by a recruiter to go be the president of Chaps Ralph Lauren and go work for a company called Warnico. Warnico was run by a woman named Linda Walkner, and it was known, I mean, that she was extraordinarily mercurial and difficult to work for. And I said, are you crazy? I'm not making a move. And they said, look, we have this business, Chaps Ralph Lauren, and we'd really like you to go there and be president. That's something, of course, she wanted, you know, the glass ceiling, et cetera, and so forth. And there was a, we discussed it a lot, because her career could have been over if that hadn't worked out. I knew Mindy was going to get poached by somebody I was sad when she came to me to tell me she was leaving, but I understood because I knew she was going to go into the big leagues. I really believe that not taking a risk is sometimes riskier than believing in yourself and taking that risk in the first place. When I took over the business, it was doing about $26 million unprofitably. And in three years, we built the company to a $250 million, one of the most profitable divisions of the company. As much as I was very successful there and the company was performing well, I didn't like how the leader of the company uh, treated people. And I went in and resigned to the CEO. She said, well, you're either independently wealthy, you have another job, or you're stupid. I said, or D, none of the above. And I was escorted out by security that afternoon saying, what did I just do? But I knew I did the right thing. Peter Strom called her and said, Ralph, I'd like to talk to you. And said, we're really devastated you're leaving. Look what you did for the business. But if you're going to work anywhere, we want you to work for us. And she started Polo Jeans for him. What I was so excited about is now I was gonna run a business that was men's and women's, so it was the opportunity to prove that, yes, I can also run a women's business. Everything she touches turns to gold. We built the business from zero to $450 million in four years. She loves the challenge, and she has proven over and over again that she can surmount those challenges. One of my first conversations with Mindy was, I don't care what I wear on the court. I don't even need to be comfortable. I just want to look fashion forward and I want to look good. I always say there were three companies I always wanted to work for. Ralph Lauren, Nike, and Disney. I feel like Nike has always been a company that was trying to move forward. Nike was a shoe business that was, that was wanting to become a marketable force in the apparel business. And that's why they recruited Mindy, was because they knew that they needed someone that had their vision and that could actually execute their vision. Here I was, out of the fashion business, female, no sport experience, and after a number of conversations, they called and offered me my dream role, and I turned it down with tears in my eyes. Going to work for Nike is something that's sort of hard to say no to. And it was because, for many reasons, I couldn't really move my family. She's proud of her professional accomplishments. She's a force in a boardroom, but her family comes first. And I was very fortunate that a few days later, they called me, said, look, we really 
want you to work for the company. We were always willing to make it work if it made sense. I called back and said, I'm in. So she commuted between Oregon and New York. And that was probably the hardest part because, you know, at that point also I'm 10 years old. But we were close. Even when my mom wasn't home, we spoke every day. And when she was home, we made the most of the time we had. There were moments it was difficult and there were moments it was great. I mean, there were things that made life really different and interesting, particularly for my daughter. This was a little bit out of her uh, typical space, a little bit different than anything she had done before. Working on Olympics and working on World Cups and traveling around the world and understanding new markets. I think she really helped get Nike going in the apparel business. I think she was a catalyst there. It was really important for me to partner with a company, especially that time, that had a leadership for, for women. And I always have been huge in fashion, especially with what I wear on the court. Imagine the buzz of Serena wearing some of those outfits that got a lot of attention. Minnie's behind that. We had some really insane, insane, awesomely insane outfits in a good way, insane in the best way. I was also fortunate to be part of the executive team and the company when they rolled out their new mission to bring innovation and inspiration to every athlete. Asterisk, if you have a body, you're an athlete. Serena, 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 Serena. That's when I realized I don't have to have the typical athlete's body. Like this is a body that happens to be one of the greatest athlete's bodies in the world, even though it doesn't necessarily look like everyone else. She really pushed Nike into the direction that it's still in today. Nike President and Chief Executive William Perez is stepping down today. But investors are clearly a bit unnerved by the abrupt management change. Now, Perez is being replaced by a 27-year Nike veteran, Mark Parker. Mindy and Mark were about the same age, and Mindy always wanted to run a company, and she just knew that if she stayed at Nike, the opportunity would probably not come. A few months later, I got a call saying, you need to go meet with Barry Diller and you need to become the CEO of IAC Retail. Throughout her career, it was, okay, let's get president, let's get CEO, let's, let's climb this ladder. I'm like, great, I'd love to meet Barry. What the hell is IAC Retail? And I'd never heard of it. She said, well, it's a portfolio of businesses owned by IAC. It includes Home Shopping Network, and a catalog portfolio of brands. So for the next two weeks in between working, all I did was watch Home Shopping Network, QVC, and trying to understand what I would bring to the business. Now, Mindy doesn't just want to go and become a caretaker. If she's going to go do something, she wants it to be something which she can transform and, and turn into something that fits her vision. So I clicked on watching Food Network, and I click on HSN, and at that moment, Wolfgang Puck was on. What do you think, I'm gonna dance? If I want people to watch me, I have to entertain them. I have to be funny, but still make them feel like they learn something. And I had this epiphany. The network should not be about selling. It should be around editorializing. So I now go for my lunch with Barry. I literally pitched him on this exciting idea of what it could be. And he said, huh, go forth. Home shopping was a different kind of retail. It was e-commerce, television medium, and it was failing. I was the eighth CEO in 10 years. The culture was stalled and frozen. The business was in decline. And I was like, what did you do? <laughs> I was like, what? This, did you really just leave Nike to, to go to this? I remember I went into the kitchen where we prepare before we go on air. I opened a cabinet, spoiled things, you know, uh, sauces with mushroom growing on top and everything. It was a disaster. She's like, it's not gonna be this way. Just watch, I'm gonna change it. She starts with what I would call a manifesto. And it's the idea of just this long form, written out, by hand plan of what she's going to do. She's like Wonder Woman. She knows how to build a team. And team building is essential to any great leadership. I had to get out of a hundred and probably $60 million worth of products that didn't fit our new brand, either weren't of the quality or weren't of the relevance. Like these bedazzled knit 
Easter color sweaters. Peach skin jersey sweatpants. We couldn't turn around the company if we didn't have the products, the personalities, the voices, and the credibility to editorialize commerce. It's not just about sell, sell, sell. It's really about capturing your brand story. And that's how we were able to attract Amon. That's how we were able to bring in the movie studios like Disney and Universal and Sony. She actually brought Hollywood to HSN, like Lionel Richie there when, uh, you know, when CDs were at the high. Brought me on board, which was really cool. She brought Rod Stewart there, Maria Carey. I'd say five years in, we were saying no to people who wanted to be a part of it. It became cool to be on HSN. It became a great place to shop. And it really was this transformational moment is that that manifesto had come to life. It's more immersive and it's more social, but it's also more efficient. In November 2007, Barry Diller's on the phone. And he said, we're going to spin a number of the businesses out and you're gonna take the company public and you're gonna be a public company CEO. Then Mindy and our CFO at the time, Judy Schmeling, they did the road show. Fast forward, there I was the summer of 2008, as the world is starting to crumble. What's been called the worst financial crisis in modern times, certainly the largest financial disaster in decades. In it sky. was the scariest time for me, but it wasn't because I was scared about me. I felt that I had this massive responsibility to 6,000 people. And through that period, heads down, focus on the customer. She had the vision of where the company has to go to stay competitive and to grow the business. Not a lot of companies can say they went public at that time and really created success out of it the way she did. HSM was one of the few retailers who actually grew in 2008 and 2009 and beyond. Taking a current platform of TV and transforming that into a digital powerhouse and ultimately the top five mobile shopping platform in the country, that's what Mindy did. I do think it was because of, yes, the resiliency of the business model, but the fact that this passionate culture that we had reinvigorated and re-inspired were all aligned and were passionate about making sure that we were going to do our best work in our most difficult time. When I met Mindy, I go, uh -uh. Done, done, done. She is the one. It became clear to me very early on in my career that there was a mantra that I have followed. Am I passionate about what I do? Is it purposeful? Will it have impact? And this idea of positive impact, whether it be on people's lives, whether it be on the business, whether it be for your family, is really important to me. I knew I wasn't ready to retire. I knew I wanted to do one more thing, but I didn't want to be in retail and I didn't want to be in fashion. I really want to do something that was going to have more meaning. And in October 2015, I was watching CNBC. Oprah Winfrey is buying a 10% stake in Weight Watchers. It's about a $45 million investment. Now she's gonna, not only going to be a member, she's going to be a board member. A year later, I saw that they had parted ways with their CEO and got a little curious. I got a call from a recruiter about another big retail job. She said, I don't understand. Don't you have to search for Weight Watchers? And she goes, are you interested? And I said, well, let me put it this way. I don't know if I'm interested. I'm curious. And I brought her in. She met the chairman. Chairman loved her. And, you know, Oprah was next. The feeling I had when I first met Mindy Grossman was of someone who was speaking her truth, who was authentic, who wasn't a bull the boldness of Mindy married to the iconic nature of Oprah, that's powerful. We were so aligned on the vision of what this brand and business and the impact it could have on people in the world. You gotta turn the world upside down to make it happen. Mindy Grossman is the person you call. She could see what was happening with the issues of wellness and health and weight. It bothered her that there are so many people out there who 
could use some assistance, basically, to make their lives better. Her vision for seeing this company be as something beyond a weight loss company, because weight is connected to everything else in your life. It's a manifestation of how you think about yourself, how you feel about yourself, what you do or what you don't do. It's about your habits. This was an opportunity for me at a point in my life where I felt it was of ultimate importance to not just deliver a financial return on equity, but deliver a human return on equity. I felt this is the one. She's the one. She is the one. Mindy Grossman has just been announced as a new CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Weight Watchers. I'll but she didn't come in saying, okay, everybody out and let me bring in my own people. She came in first saying, let's listen, let's see where we are. I quickly realized that for us to really achieve what our ultimate goal was, we really needed to redefine our purpose, our mission, our vision, and the strategies to live up to that. I remember coming into a board meeting and she had created this display of all of the different logos and all of the different packaging that we had all over the world. She was like, how can anybody possibly understand you, what message you're trying to convey when it's different everywhere you look? And we said, we want to put a stake in the ground that the mark WW becomes the global mark of wellness around the world. WW reporting disappointing fourth quarter results and gave a weak outlook for this year as it continues to shift from a dieting company to a wellness brand. And I think that one of the things that we missed in transitioning to WW is reminding people, yes, we still are about weight loss, but weight loss in the bigger picture of your whole life and what that means to your wellness and well-being. We have a journey ahead of us, a journey of really wanting to help change the health trajectory of the world, which sounds like a bold statement, but it's critical if we're going to you know, live the lives we want to live and if we want our society to not keep going backwards in terms of health trajectory. Healthy is the new skinny. I first heard that from Mindy Grossman. She leaves the brand always better than she found it. The brand is resonating. Our subscriber base is at an all-time high. Our retention is at an all-time high. We have our new program launching. It's probably the most groundbreaking and different thing that we've ever done. It's the most customized. I just don't even know if we would st still be in existence without her, period. Mindy has a heart and soul, and it motivates her as much as anything else. Finding a way to tie how she feels about the world to what she's doing is very important. My passion is about ensuring that the next generation of the world has a life that's even better than the life that we had, and how can I impact that in powerful ways? I have not met as many people as I would have liked to in my life who are as giving as she is, and at the same time as brilliant as she is, and as determined professionally. I've been to two trips into the field, one to Senegal, which I had the incredible experience of taking my daughter, who was 23 at the time. I can see the value it's had for her being able to really feel like she's making a difference in a way that's not just with building a brand or a company, it's a global impact. And it's really time to embrace our role as a leader for healthy lives all over the world. I think she thinks big. And I think she thinks that whatever she does is going to be important and game changing. Everything that she's done, she's done ahead of her time. She had a vision each step of the way of what she was going to do, and she did it. We're actually a technology experience company with what I call a human-centric overlay. I love her because she's willing to take risks and she's willing to admit if those risks didn't work out and not to sit and sulk about it, take full responsibility and say, now here's the way forward. Healthy is the new skinny! She is always full of surprises, always full of new ideas, always full of innovation. I think she is really one of the best marketers out there. I wish she would take over my company one day. She does what she does because it's what she wants to do. 
and she's got goals to reach and she's gonna get them done. She doesn't do them for the glory. The day I woke up and decided to change the trajectory of my life, that moment, I think, set the course for me that risk-taking and boldness is truly the essence of transformation. It gave me the courage to live a life without compromise.